of the season. Number eight, Robbie Musto now, Ian Baird, he scored as well. That's eight for Ian Baird during the course of the year. Ten, Paul Kerr, 11, John Hendry, who picked up a nasty knock, as you might have heard me describe as we moved towards the half-time whistle when he went in with a tackle between himself and Les Robinson. Oh my, oh my, was John Hendry lucky he was wearing shin pads this afternoon. And all that happened was that he had a cracked shin pad. He's now able to resume in the middles for a side down the right-hand side in second half. And the pot of subs not used as yet. It's Stu Tripley and Mark Proctor. Two minutes of the second half have gone. Oxford two, Borough two. Ball with the Oxford goalkeeper, Paul Key. Paul Key, long clearance. Tempted flick on there by Lee Nogan. He's got a beautiful goal this afternoon, but Borough fans back home won't want me to describe that too much. And Nogan not doing well there. Borough clear it, in fact, up towards Bernie Slavin. But full back, that's Les Robinson. Turns it towards his goalkeeper, Paul Key, who's been a bit embarrassed so far this afternoon. Remember Borough's goal in 16 minutes? Jimmy Phillips, lovely centre. Easy for goalkeepers, so they say. He dropped it, did Paul Key, and Bernie Slavin did the rest at that stage of the game. We were cheering. We were on our way to three points, so we thought we may yet get middles with six the way victory of the season it's going to be a bit tougher now at Oxford 2 Middlesbrough 2 ball out of play in front of the dugout Steve Foster in fact rolls it along the line Middlesbrough's left hand side as they're defending to Les Robinson to take the throw Robinson takes it gives it to Jim Maggleton Maggleton now knocks it forward down goes Oxford centre forward Martin Foyle under a challenge from Tony Mowbray a referee allows play to continue knocked in now headed clear by Alan Kernigan but not the best of clearances gives it to Les Robinson Robinson urged by the crowd to attack Paul Kerr Borough defending, left-hand side of the penalty area. Centre goes in now, in fact, it's a poor one. Way over towards far side, good clearance from John Henry. Yeah, let's not forget our rugby friends this afternoon, that vital <laughs> Pilkington's Cup round three match. Still the same scoreline at Brayton Lane. West Hartlepool three, Wasps one. On the football front, Lincoln City nil, Darlington two. Hartlepool one, Scarborough nil, Sheffield United nil, Sunderland nil, Newcastle nil, Watford nil. And don't forget, the Middlesbrough Football Club can earn children need a pretty penny this afternoon. Gordon Cox and myself have pledged five pounds for every goal that Borough score. Two have scored this afternoon. We want them to score some more at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 2, with Middlesbrough are going to obviously get the full three points from this one. Colin Cooper over on far side. Drills it in towards centre circle where John Walker attempts to bring in Bernie Slavin, but Oxford defending resolutely. Oxford to attack from left to right as we look during the course of the second half. Towards the majority of their fans behind the goal that Stephen Pears is defending. Goes in now and towards the path of number 10, Lee Nogan, whose control let him down. He was followed there by Paul Kerr, but number 10 battling with number 10. Lee Nogan wins it back. Now it goes towards Mark Steen. Steen linking in well with Jim Maggleton. Right-hand side. Centre goes in now. Alan Kernigan, good interception. As far there as Jimmy Phillips. Phillips clearance driven straight at Paul Kerr. Middlesbrough looking unsure at the moment in defence. Steve Foster has it. Foster to Les Robinson. Cheers of the crowd for every Oxford touch of the football. Mark Steen, near side of play. Put in there, but a good tracking back from Paul Kerr. The fans are enjoying this one. Hope you are as well. Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 2, five minutes into the second half here at the Manor Ground. Fullback, Les Robinson has it, edge of area, shooting chance, ricochets there off Robbie Mustor. Round it goes, Oxford's corner, their first of the second half, and the crowd are enjoying it, as I say. It's been marvellous football. I'm sure that both managers won't like the standard of defensive play that they've seen, but anyway, this is what football's all about. Lots of goals, lots of thrills, and Oxford do have that corner. Away towards the right-hand side, taken by Jim Maggleton. It's a poor one, cleared there by Colin Cooper, helping out, obviously, this near side of play in defence. Cooper trying to track Maggleton inside the penalty area, but Oxford are pushing it more back towards halfway line. And Les Robinson. Robinson meets simply against the head there of Colin Cooper. Cooper's clearance is knocked out of play once more. Or is it by Robinson? Cooper just kept it in. Number twos again, playing with number twos at the moment. And, in fact, a short pass there goes towards Lee Nogan. Nogan attempting to take on Colin Cooper. Go on, you the crowd. Goes towards the bar line. In fact, it goes out of play. So it's going to be a goal kick for Borough and pressure relieved. Full time in one of our rugby matches, but thankfully not at Braden Lane. Bad news, I'm afraid, for Hartlepool Rovers. They've gone down by 36 points to nil at the hands of Saracens. Well, it was always going to be a tough match for the Rovers. It certainly proved that. Saracens 36. Hartlepool Rovers nil at Brayton Lane. It's still the same. There's still time for West to get back into it. West Hartlepool three, Wasps seven. And here at the Manor Ground, seven minutes we are into the second half. Oxford two, Middlesbrough two. The first half was breathless. The second half is opening in exactly the same fashion, except we haven't had the goals yet. First half, Ian Baird two minutes. Bernie Slavin 16. Oxford's reply was instant and powerful. Mark Steen 29. Lee Nogan 32. The game, as we always say in the commentary box, Finally poised, Jimmy Phillips has it, five yards inside Burroughs half, Oxford's right, 
puts it now towards Robbie Musto inside centre circle. Musto short pass to Colin Cooper. Cooper up now towards Ian Baird, Butters goal scorer in a battle royale with the centre half Steve Foster. The middles for the red shirts playing keep ball at the moment as they attack that strange name, isn't it? Cuckoo Lane end of the ground. Strange indeed will be Borough supporters' reflections on this one as they watch their side build up. Alan Kernigan. Gives it simply there to the boot of Steve Foster. Much experienced is Foster. Wouldn't have liked that one. Wouldn't have given too many international caps with a clearance like that because he puts it out over on far side. Throw is taken by Colin Cooper. Looks to John Henry. Henry is battling there over on the far side with number six, Andrew Melville. Goes out of play. Our ball, says all of the Middlesbrough contingent in the seats. My ball, says John Henry. Oxford's, says referee David Phillips. Throw is taken then by... Andrew Melville goes down Middlesbrough's right-hand side. Header is won by Colin Cooper. Tries to give it to John Henry. Neat flick on by John Henry. Charging there is Ian Baird. True centre-forward style. But knocked out of play by Kerry Evans. It's going to be thrown for Middlesbrough. Come on, Borough. Yell the away supporters as they stand behind the goal. Defended by Paul Key. Come on, Borough. The roar. In it comes now. The ball, that is, towards Robbie Muster. Muster back towards Borough skipper Tony Mowbray. Mowbray right-footed and deep looks towards the head of Ian Baird powerful flick on Bernie saving back to goal just can't control it Oxen making an awful hash of trying to clear it and Colin Cooper now scoops it out towards far side and John Henry the ball is beating John Henry out of play but really this afternoon neither defence has exactly coated themselves in glory but it's all adding up to a fine afternoon of football entertainment Throwing goes in over on the far side. Eight minutes shown the watch at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 2. Middlesbrough tacking from right to left towards that cool in end of the ground. But having to do some defensive duties at the moment is John Walk. Wiley experienced campaigner is John Walk taking the sting out of the game there. And Mark Steen, he's experienced as well, isn't he? Many campaigns. Mark Steen, you might remember, I think he began his career at Luton, didn't he? Then tried to help, rather plough his trade round the Football League circuit, coming now here to the Manor ground and involved in the battle there with John Walk, with John Walk won quite comprehensively back to Stephen Pears, long clearance now, Ian Baird with a knock on to Bernie Slavin, forwards working in tandem Baird bringing Bernie Slavin, can he finish? Oh, he puts it over the bar, there's Bernie Slavin that is a goal kick but that is also a very, very good chance that has gone by. Yeah, we'd imagine that Bernie will be kicking himself for that. He's just applauding his work from his teammates off the ball there. Great work from Ian Baird, just getting that ball down to him. He's had a super game, Ian Baird, this afternoon. And good work indeed from Bernie Slavin uh, to get that shooting position. Just limping as well, Slavin, at the moment. Let's hope that isn't uh, foretaste of what's to come. Just gone down and... Uh, onto his haunches at the moment Bernie Slavin as well trying to run off a bit of a kick on the ankle I think he got there just after his shot the centre half clear, went, uh, went through on him and cleaned him out as it were but uh, Bernie Slavin very very disappointed indeed not to have put that one away you would have put money on him to score from that distance as it is your pocket money still intact yes pocket money still intact but I would have rather paid up had Bernie Slavin put the ball into the back of the net there because that would have given the Borough supporters behind Paul Key's goal a little bit of a boost not forgetting the boost it would have given the red shirts as well out there on the field of play but as it is it is still Oxford 2 Middlesbrough 2 long ball driven forward to Borough's defence Jimmy Phillips and Mark Steen combining but already Lansman's flag over on far side had been raised it's going to be instead free kick for Middlesbrough offside decision given and uh, just left to reflect there I suppose a little bit as we say on the standard of defensive football this afternoon not of the best but who cares really if you're getting good entertainment good value for money and the crowd I would estimate about probably 8,000 or so in the manor ground this afternoon swelled by that healthy contingent from Borough supporters behind Paul Key's goal free kick taken by Borough skipper Tony Mowbray gives it rather simply though towards the head of Andrew Melville who clears it and now comes to the near side of play as Oxford are beginning to attack driving it forward good ball indeed from Lee Nogan to Les Robinson setting off on the run Les Robinson centre I thought took a deflection off Alan Kernigan who was doing a good shadowing job there but in fact the referee said that no contact had taken place with Alan Kernigan it went rather simply Goal kick for Borough. Lincoln nil, Darlington three. The goal in 56 minutes will confirm the score of Floyd as soon as we can get that one. Lincoln nil, Darlington three. Still the same in Hartlepool. Hartlepool one, Scarborough nil. Sheffield United nil, Sunderland nil. Newcastle nil, Watford nil. A shade under 20 minutes left in the rugby. West Hartlepool three, Wasps seven. Just reiterating that full time score as well. Saracens 36, Hartlepool Rovers nil. Best, I would say, sports coverage in the North East. That's what you get when you tune to Radio Cleveland. And here at the Manor Ground, it's Oxford 2, uh, Middlesbrough 2. Middlesbrough goalkeeper Stephen Pears has it. Drives it forward, looks for the head of Ian Baird. It, in fact, comes back inside centre circle then. Robbie Musto tries to bring in Jimmy Phillips. But the yellow shirts of Oxford are winning that ball at the moment. This near side of play, 10 yards inside the Oxford half of the field. Their right-hand side, Les Robinson's a little bit worried about Bernie Slavin. Back to full fitness. You might have heard Gordon Cox 
reflecting that uh, Benny Seven took a knock as he missed that golden opportunity on 54 minutes. Well, Benny Seven's back buzzing again, looking to add 12 goals for this season. I think I said in the last away commentary, whoever managed to sign Benny Seven for Middlesbrough Football Club, I wanted to shake his hand, such has been Benny Seven's contribution to Borough over the years. This afternoon, scoring for Middlesbrough. So, two Ian Baird, but it's 2 2 at the minute at Manor Ground. Comes to Mark Steen, edge of the area, knocked into the path there of centre forward Martin Foyle, foiled indeed by the fists of Stephen Pears as Oxford attack. It's over towards Borough's right hand side. Centre comes in now. Stephen Pears, the minister, fingertips gets it to this near side of play where Jimmy Phillips retains a bit of composure, has it just in front of him. Jimmy Phillips knocks it up towards halfway line where Ian Baird tried to get the flick on, but Steve Foster wins that one. Foster towards the heart of Borough's defence and the heart indeed of a lion of Alan Kernigan there. Heads it clear. Thought he went out of play, but in fact it came straight back to Alan Kernigan and Kernigan composure itself there. He gives it towards his goalkeeper, Stephen Pears. In midweek, you might remember that in the Zenith Data Systems Cup there was an opportunity for Simon Coleman to stake his players to a situation alongside Tony Moore at the heart of Borough's defence but I don't think there was any doubt in the mind of Borough boss Colin Todd that this afternoon for league action he would recall Alan Kernigan and Kernigan resuming that partnership with Tony Moore one or two creaks in Borough's defence this afternoon conceding those goals from Mark Steen on 29 and Lee Nogan on 32 minutes and also I think I forgot to mention that Borough skipper Tony Moore picked up a booking in the first half so he's walking a little bit of a tightrope in the second Oxford's number three that's Kerry Evans launch it high Highest, in fact, of the afternoon is Burroughs number three. Jimmy Phillips clears it towards centre circle. Oxford, though, the gold shirts, yellow shirts, in fact, of Oxford win that one. And Kerry Evans gives it back towards goalkeeper Paul Key. I suppose it, it so often happens, doesn't it, that during the first half of a game, goals flying left, right and centre. Then when the managers, that's Oxford's manager, Brian Horton, Borough boss, Colin Todd, get to grips with things in the dressing room at half-time, we tend to have a tighter, more compact second half. That's what we've got at the Manor ground. 14 minutes we're into the second period. And it's Oxford 2, Borough 2. Yeah, I just get the feeling the game's calming down a little bit. A fast few, it's frenetic opening, really. I just break up uh, there is Burnish. You know, Burnish has been forced wide a bit. Middlesbrough's still looking good going forward, but uh, the game just about calming down, I think. Two sides playing out the first 13 or 14 minutes there at a pace, which neither side could continue throughout that second half. But uh, it's Middlesbrough, really, I suppose, who created the only clear-cut chance uh, with that uh, chance missed from Bernie Slavin. But Stephen Pears there reacting superbly twice, just punching off the, uh, the feet of Martin Foyle and then arching his back to tip away that cross coming in from Simpson from the left wing. Excellent piece of goalkeeping as the ball was destined for the head of Steve Foster. But uh, I just get the feeling, as I say, that there's plenty more football. It's a bit cliche, isn't it? But there's plenty <laughs> more football left in this one. Yeah, you made a laugh, my friend. It's all right. You just got me ten pounds into debt this afternoon. How dare you? Now there's plenty more football. Hopefully, plenty more goals as well. But it is a very, very good game of football. No doubt about that. Thoroughly entertaining for a crowd. I would agree with you. Somewhere in the region of seven or eight thousand or so. Oxford have a free kick over on the far side, ten yards inside Burris half of the field. It's taken now. Steve Foster, powerful header. Oh, and a quite glorious save from Middlesbrough goalkeeper Stephen Pears. The back was arched from Pears because Steve Foster, the headband resplendent, went up for that free kick, smashing header towards the top of the net, and Stephen Pears is for Stephen Pears because Oxford do, of course, have a corner. Let's see if the Borough defence can manage to clear this one a bit more confidently than they did with that free kick that came in. And it goes now, headed clear by Colin Cooper, drops midway inside Burr's half of the field, and Les Robinson just runs over the top of the ball. Comes back now to Andrew Melville, right-footed and long, looks over towards the far side of play, and Colin Cooper's going to tidy up this one quite nicely. John Tinkler has supplemented Paul Baker's first half goal of the Victoria ground. Hartlepool to Scarborough Nail. More scores when John Henry's finished his business. John Henry far side. A right-footed centre comes in now. Headed clear by Steve Foster. A threat at one end of the ground. A second or so go. Now back resolute in the heart of his own defence. He in fact clears it again, proving me wrong. Robbie Musto then dives in inside midfield. But an Oxford boot won that one. Launched it towards the head of Tony Mowbray. A bit scrappy. A little bit nitpicking, I suppose, to call this game scrappy. at The marvellous entertainment we've had at Oxford 2, Borough 2, but somebody who can bring authority and composure to things, that's John Walk, linking in well there inside midfield with Paul Kerr, and Kerr goes back the full distance of the half to goalkeeper Steve Pears. Lincoln City nil, Darlington 3, Hartlepool 2, Scarborough nil, Sheffield United nil, Sunderland nil, Newcastle nil, Watford nil, and in the rugby, around about 12 minutes or so left in this one. A spirited performance for West Hartlepool, they still can't reduce the deficit. West Hartlepool 3, Wasps 7. 17 minutes at the Manor Ground, the second half, at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 2, they may well yet be, only about a few minutes or so ago, a great and glorious header, in fact, 
from Steve Foster, bringing all the experience and neck muscles into that one. And Stephen Pears, super tip over. Oxen to circle and once more the headband and the rest of the body as well of Steve Foster moves forward to take a position as a threat to Middlesbrough's defence. And there's plenty of yellow shirts to aim for. One Oxford deal over on far side. It's number 11, Paul Simpson. Simpson trying to get round Colin Cooper. Cooper wins the battle and now John Henry has it. Henry to halfway line and Ian Baird attempting to attack Oxford's left. Comes back to Robin Field now. It's there to Colin Cooper. Cooper comes back now to Tony Mowbray. Mowbray in turn to... Alan Kernigan, Middlesbrough playing keep ball. Alan Kernigan now to Paul Kerr. John Walk surging forward. Great build up this from the Borough. Ian Baird takes a tumble. It must surely be a penalty. It is. A Borough fan in the main stand leaps up in the air and says, Thank you, referee David Phillips. But Ian Baird was far in the second half. No doubt whatsoever about that one. And in fact, Ian Baird, who has tumbled there over the leg of an outstretched Oxford defender, is going to take this penalty kick himself, reminiscent of John Hickton style at the edge of the area. Will it be reminiscent of John Hickton finishing from the spot? Ian Baird takes it, crashes it in. Right arm raise is Ian Baird. Walk, walk, walk towards the Borough supporters. They're ecstatic about it. Ian Baird's penalty puts Borough back in the lead at Oxford 2, middles for 3. Well, you won't see many better penalties taken than that. What an excellent execution. You can't really get carried away with penalty executions normally. But what a perfect way for a penalty. It was hard, it was straight. And if goalkeepers are going to move, they've got no chance at all. Goalkeepers obviously have to move to save a penalty. At least that's what they think anyway. So did Ian Baird. Planted that one in the back of the net. Due reward from him. Uh, he was playing through when he was brought down there. He was fouled. John Walk actually wanted to take that penalty. He wasn't arguing with Ian Baird. I certainly <laughs> would have liked to. And Middlesbrough back in front. Middlesbrough back in front, but I still would like to wager which way this game's going to go. It's a poor back pass, almost lets in Mark Steen. Jimmy Phillips, though, stopped that one. The Borough fans now in full voice as Robbie Musto has it towards far side and Colin Cooper. Middlesbrough's full back as Borough tend to attack from right to left towards that cuckoo lane end of the ground, and Middlesbrough now have a free kick. Five yards inside the Oxford half of the field. It's going to be taken by John Walk. Plenty of red shirts to him. Bob Bernie Slavin peels away towards left-hand side. John Walk puts in now. Attempted header there from Ian Baird gets nowhere as Jim Maggleton has it up towards halfway line and Martin Foyle inside centre circle. Foyle now towards Mark Steen. Yellow shirts running forward for Oxford. The edge of the area is Colin Cooper. Surely, yes indeed, he denies the run of Jim Maggleton then. Turns it up towards Sir John Henry. Henry back header gets nowhere as Andrew Melville has it. 20 minutes into the second half. It's now to the edge of Middlesbrough's penalty area. They're hanging on. A shot goes in. That shot goes wide. It takes a deflection off Tony Mowbray. It's going to be Oxford's second corner of the second half. And Borough red shirts are going to regroup. I can see the Borough substitutes on that touchline. That's Stuart Ripley and Mark Proctor warming up at the moment. But no indication as yet that the Borough manager, Colin Todd, is going to use either of the substitutes as Oxford have a corner. And uh, it's in front of the majority of their support at that end of the ground. And uh, it's going to be swung in now. Left-footed. Goes to the edge of six-yard box. Steve Foster is denied by the head of Alan Kernigan. Breaks towards far side of the penalty area. Middlesbrough's right. And Colin Cooper. Cooper then knocks it long. That is a great run from Paul Kerr. But instead hits against the head. Then down to the chest of Andrew Melville. Who now begins to run forward. Tall, rangy centre-half. Gets it towards the edge of the area. Mark Steen. Steen trying to elude Alan Kernigan. Kernigan's tackle is crisp. But the ball breaks for Paul Simpson. Up towards far side of the penalty area. My ball, says Stephen Pears. You just take a break from the football. Although uh, John Henry is in full flight down here. We'll come back to uh, some traffic news in a moment. Ian Baird, full flight. Edge of the area. Centre goes in. Benny Slim in powerful header. But it's offside. It will not count as that sender went in Bernie Slavin put it in the excitement was in the voice for a moment till Gordon Cox said behind that steel girder is a linesman with his flag raised yeah we'll just take a break from football for the time being there because uh, we have some rather serious traffic news to bring you the A1027 1027 Stockton Ring Road is blocked at Newham Grange long tailbacks in each direction this has been caused by a serious fire you are advised to avoid the area if at all possible that's the A1027 Stockton Ring Road blocked in each direction at Newham Grange long tailbacks in each direction because of a serious fire please do all you can to avoid the services we're midway through the second half at the Manor Ground. It's Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 3. Borough's goal scorers a double from Ian Baird on two minutes 
a tremendous penalty. I described it a la John Hickton on 63 and Bernie Slavin on 16, sandwiched in between. But Oxford give them 100% marks for their battling qualities this afternoon. Coming back to equalise once through Mark Steen and Lee Nogan. They may yet do so again. It's on the edge of the area now. Knocked into the path there of Martin Foyle. In fact, it goes wide to Jimmy Phillips. Jimmy Phillips' clearance is poor. Oxford have it with Mark Steen at the edge of the area. Now Lee Nogan goes inside the box and Tony Mowbray stops it on six-yard area there. Gives it to Paul Kerr. Boris number 10 trying to break free from one or two Oxford challenges and does so quite superbly. Well done indeed to Paul Kerr. Puts it now towards fullback Colin Cooper. Infield to Sean Hendry. Ten yards inside Boris half of the field. Outstretched boot from Mickey Lewis. Borough throw in in front of one or two rather agitated Oxford supporters. Throwing them was definitely was Middlesbrough's. It's going to be taken by right fullback Colin Cooper. Throws it now five yards inside the Oxford half of the field to Bernie Slavin. Not the best ball though. In fact, it drifts way, way wide to Paul Kerr. We're not complaining. Paul Kerr to Ian Baird. Kerr gets it back again. Near side of play, hugging the touchline. Gives it back there. Ten yards inside Burris half to Alan Kernigan. Inside centre circle, the red shirt, the number eight. The Oxford old boy, Robbie Masto. Out wide now, it goes towards right fullback. Jimmy Phillips touches it just inside the half of the field there towards Bernie Slavin. Slavin, in fact, to John Walk inside centre circle. Alan Kernigan, Borough playing keep ball and doing it very well indeed. I think I just described Jimmy Phillips as right fullback. He is, of course, let me correct myself, left. In it goes from Jimmy Phillips, number three, towards Bernie Slavin. Lansman's flag was raised in the moment for offside. A referee allowed play to continue. The yellow shirts of Oxford have possession. Five yards inside Burris half of the field. And, in fact, the referee gets in the way there of John Walk and it breaks from middles for Tony Mowbray towards Benny Slavin. Slavin says he was foul by Steve Foster. Referee David Phillips saw nothing wrong. A harsh chattel roar. A crude chattel by Alan Kernigan. And Kernigan could be in serious trouble. Yeah, Alan Kernigan is uh, incurring the wrath of the referee here. A yellow card I think is going to be brandished despite the uh, protestations of uh, the Middlesbrough centre-half. But uh, just calm your excitement down a bit, Mr Brownlee. I think at least get the positions right if you can do <laughs> nothing else. I was going to say that things were going to go from uh, better to even better if you can do that for Darlington. But Gary Gill has just missed the penalty. Scoreline remained unchanged. Lincoln nil, Darlington three, Gill missing a penalty. Hartlepool two, Scarborough nil. Sheffield United nil, Sunderland nil. Newcastle nil, Watford nil. In the closing stages of the rugby, no change. West three, Wasp seven. Alan Kerning gets away with just the yellow card and helps Tony Mowbray to clear that free kick. Or does he? Mickey Lewis wins it edge of the area. Oxford now have it. Centre drilled in. Headed clear there by Alan Kernigan. The saviour for Borough on the edge of six-yard box. And also on the far side is John Henry trying to complete the clearance. In fact, they do so at the expense of a throw-in, which is going to be taken about on a par with the edge of Middlesbrough's penalty area. Come on, you yellows, yell the Oxford supporters behind Stephen Pear's goal. There's a tumble over on far side. John Henry, though, brings the ball away. Or does he? In fact, gives it to Kerry Evans. Centre goes in now. Free clearance, though, surely by Alan Kerning and does it very well. Heads it down there to the busy Paul Kerr. Near side of play. In front of our comp position is Bernie Slavin. But that wasn't a pass to admire. But it wasn't a pass to admire. Does Les Robinson clip the heels there of Bernie Slavin? And Bernie Slavin's now dribbling away from referee David Phillips. The referee incurring one or two boos from the fans here because they didn't see the foul, but there was one, surely. Benny Seven doesn't normally lay poor passes like that. Middlesbrough free kick, because we look at the watch and tells us 25 minutes have gone of the second half at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 3. is going to be taken five yards inside Borough's half of the field. It's the left-hand side as Borough look at it. Drilled forward there by Jimmy Phillips. Ian Baird applies the flick on. It's a free header coming in behind by Andrew Melville. Up towards halfway line. Jimmy Phillips in a battle there with centre-forward Martin Foyle. Foyle says, my ball. A referee says Borough ball. That's taken by Jimmy Phillips towards the chest of Ian Baird. Baird is battling, skipping round Jim Maggleton. In fact, it goes out of play off Jim Maggleton. So it's going to be a throw in for Borough in front of the Borough dugout. As Mark Proctor gives a helpful hand there to the ball and gives it to Ian Baird. He's a tremendous looking centre forward, is Ian Baird. Centre forward in full flow this afternoon. His pride is boosted by two goals. Who knows? He may yet go on to collect his hat trick. Sunderland are one goal up at Bramall Lane, so uh, there were people saying, well, this is the first win of the season for Sheffield United. Not so. Sheffield United nil, Sunderland won the latest score. The goal scorer, Peter Davenport. Thank you, Gordon Cock. Good news. Middlesbrough take that throw in. Now it's, uh, in fact, in the possession there of John Walk. 
who incurs the booze of the crowd as he goes back the full distance of the half and an extra five yards as well towards goalkeeper Stephen Pears but Sean to Liverpool and he's not worried about one or two boos from the fans here in the manor grounds it's getting very dark indeed here floodlight shining and shining on a Borough performance it's looking good at the moment Oxford 2 medals for 3 his centre goes in deep Stephen Pears handling immaculate as ever to the edge of the penalty area takes one step back to make sure he will not go outside the area with the football as he tries to clear it now right footed and deep drifts in fact over towards the right hand side John Henry loses out in the air but it comes back to Colin Cooper Cooper to Bernie Slavin goodly off to Robbie Musto inside centre circle towards Colin Cooper once more Cooper trying to probe the Oxford defence there with a through ball aim for Ian Baird but clipping up the heels of Ian Baird was Kerry Evans with a long clearance out of play over on far side midway inside the borough half of the field Middlesbrough's right and this is going to be taken by Colin Cooper Oxford 2 Middlesbrough 3 is the good news for the moment from the manor ground I say for the moment not that I'm a pessimist in Middlesbrough's cause but quite simply the way in which the goals have been flying in during the course of the afternoon anything can happen in these closing stages and the ball flat back well away he goes into the distance sorry about that problem with the uh, commentary from the manor ground we'll get it sorted out just as, as quick as we can uh, crucial stage but Middlesbrough on top leading Oxford United by three goals to two Sinsel Bank no change Lincoln nil Darlington three that's good news Gary Gill penalty Kevin Smith a header Lee Ellison just 17 and the scoring on 56 minutes and Gary Gill missing a penalty on 69 minutes it's uh, Darlington no 3-0 up and going well against Lincoln City Hartlepool 2 Scarborough nil at the Victoria ground Paul Baker 15 minutes John Tinkler on 62 minutes we're sorting that problem out with uh, Oxford United but it gives us a good uh, chance to uh, nip across to Brayton Lane doesn't it West Hartlepool against Wasps West Hartlepool three points Wasps seven Pilkington Cup round three dying moments back to Jack Goodfellow well John this isn't a play for, place for the faint heart at the moment uh, it's West up against it in the moment it's Wasps again on the attack down on the West line it's a scrummage but fortunately for West, uh, they're managing to hold out at the moment. Still three points to West, seven to uh, Wasps. Into injury time we're going. And uh, Wasps right on the West line. Ryan again, the number eight, digging in. This is how they scored at the beginning of the game. On goes the second push. West desperately trying to keep Wasps on the West line. Jonathan Wrigley starting there, waiting to try and tackle Ryan if he picks the ball up, the number eight. But uh, the ball didn't come out. It went round more than 90 degrees. So referee Fred Howard brings them back it'll be another wasp scrummage as the crowd uh, try to keep warm here very cold conditions it's been at Brayton Lane this afternoon and West well they played with a great deal of great deal of dignity but uh, they've been up against the elements and their uh, wasps the ball goes in it's right the number eight picks up he's going for the line he's tackled turns in field looks for support Wasps again with the ball. The little scrum half right tries to get over. He's held up right on the line again. Wasps swarming all over West, trying to get that ball down right on their line. But uh, West desperately defending. The big forwards driving over it again. The black shirts of Wasps are over the line. But West will not allow them to get that ball down. And the referee says uh, they'll have a scrummage. So we'll hand you back to the studio, John. Injury time at Braden Lane. West 3, Wasps 7. Yeah, it's looking all over, isn't it, for uh, West Hartlepool, sadly. But what a, a brave fight at Brayton Lane. And uh, if you weren't with us earlier, Hartlepool Rovers have been beaten this afternoon in their cup tie away to Saracens. Saracens 36, uh, Rovers nil. News that Newcastle United, by the way, have just taken the lead at uh, home to Watford. Mickey Quinn back in the side. Newcastle won. Watford nil, that's the latest there. We've sorted out our problems at the Manor Ground just as well. It's a bit of a nail-biter, isn't it? Oxford United 2, Middlesbrough 3. You've missed none of the action, as they say. Alistair Brownlee. Yes, none of the action missed. Thanks to the tricky work of Gordon Cox on the screwdriver, which has repaired the line here to the Manor Ground. But still, Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 3. You wouldn't want to miss the final 15 minutes of action, would you? And uh, as I say, courtesy of the good work from Gordon Cox alongside me here, we're now back live, as it were, and it's Oxford 2, uh, Borough 3. So keep on biting your nails. And I would estimate there's about 30 minutes or so of action left in this one. It's going to be a thriller to take it right to the full-time whistle. And you're correct, I'm not going to dwell upon the fact that if the scoreline remained in all Sydney Middlesbrough 6th 
victory away from home this season I wouldn't be so silly bearing in mind what's gone on before in this great game of football down here credit to the second division as Ian Baird picks it up over on far side centre goes in now it's surely goal yes it is and in it goes from Robbie Musto Ian Baird it is accepts the applause of the Borough fans in the seats but Robbie Musto comes back to his old stamping ground and stamps surely Middlesbrough to three points and it's now Oxford two Borough four that will have given him a tremendous amount of satisfaction. Paul Kerr is just coming off as well now. Stuart Ripley coming on for the uh, final 13 minutes of this match. That's a substitution which is purely because you would think to save Paul Kerr for Wednesday. But what a superb goal that was. Ian Baird has been quite magnificent this afternoon, no doubt about that. He's playing out of his skin at the moment. Not only has he scored two, he's created chances for others as well. That was an inch-perfect cross coming in from the far side from Ian Baird. Robbie Musto finishing far excellence, edge of the six-yard box. Surely now Middlesbrough have recorded their sixth away win of the season. <laughs> He's saying it I'm again. Saying nothing. Honest, honest, I'm saying nothing. I'm not tempting Providence. But you would like to think that that should be it. A shot coming in from distance from uh, Mark Steen, which doesn't trouble Stephen Fares. But Middlesbrough were two goals up before and two goals in four minutes. But pulled that back. Probably no better than to say what I'm going to say. But that really was uh, an excellent goal for Musto. Tremendous satisfaction for him. He just, just clenched his fist in a... In a sheer delight after he scored that one it means so much to him and to the travelling hordes which you can hear Middlesbrough surely or even a Raptors I'll wrap more than that if Oxford managed to get back into this game but it's Oxford 2 uh, and Middlesbrough 4 at the moment here at the Manor Ground there is 12 minutes of action left and so far during the course of the afternoon as Gordon Cox and myself pledged £5 to children need for every Middlesbrough goal that is scored during the course of the day I make that even though my mathematics is rather rusty it's cost us £20 a piece so far. I hope the cheque doesn't bounce. Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 4. We don't mind paying every penny. Avoid this game of football at the Manor Ground. As I say, there's still about 12 minutes to so. Oxford attack from left to right. Mark Steen, good ball to Lee Nogan. Close to that touchline, hugging it. In slides Jimmy Phillips. Out of play it goes. And to the astonishment of your commentator and also to the fans behind the goal, I did think that was a corner, but referee David Phillips said goal kick full-time scorer of Brayton Lane it's ended in disappointment for West but what a magnificent performance in defeat it's the English disease I suppose isn't it magnificent in defeat West Hartlepool 3 Wasp 7 the football unchanged Lincoln nil Darlington 3 Hartlepool 2 Scarborough nil Sunderland still one goal to the good at Sheffield United and Newcastle one up at home to Watford and I'm sitting here enjoying and admiring a tremendous centre-forward display from Ian Baird. But he is now on halfway line. Arms, hands on hips, as it were, watching a centre go in from number two, Les Robinson. Collected, quite simply, by Borough goalkeeper Stephen Pears. And whilst you're away, and the magic screwdriver of Gordon Cox to work here at the Manor Ground, Ian Baird put the only blot in his copybook of the afternoon. He didn't retreat ten yards from a free kick and picked up that booking from referee David Phillips. But Ian Baird won't be bothered too much. That's gone of Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 4. As the ball breaks forward once more. Bernie Slavin inside the penalty area. Bernie Slavin is tumbled. That is Middlesbrough's second penalty of the afternoon. Slavin goes down. Penalty, says referee David Phillips. Ian Baird, is this your moment of glory? You deserve it. You will deserve your hat trick. And Ian Baird grabs the football from Bernie Slavin. He says simply, I'm going to take this one. No arguments. I think I know where the ball's going to end up, or at least I hope so. Ian Baird then retreats to the edge of the area, turns now, faces the travelling hordes from Middlesbrough. Will they salute his hat trick? They do! Ian Baird, as usual, raises that right arm in a famous salute. He then gets a piggyback from Bernie Slavin, and we're dancing all the way back to Teesside at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 5, and a hat-trick and an afternoon of glory for Ian Baird. If anybody deserved it, Ian Baird does. What a superb performance from Ian Baird. Bernie Slavin and he have linked superbly this afternoon. Alan Kerner are going to be coming off the field very shortly, and Mark Proctor will be going on. And again, I presume is pure precaution. That's going to be in a couple of minutes' time when the ball goes out of play. But Ian Baird, a supreme performance, an excellent hat-trick, two, two penalties. So what? They've still got to be scored. He scored them in different styles. Into the far corner, this one. Side-footed. The keeper went the wrong way. He's done so most of the afternoon. Ian Baird has forced him to do that. I cannot speak highly enough of a performance of an excellent centre-forward and uh, an excellent spell of form at the moment. Ian Baird at the moment is quite magnificent. Yes, Gordon Cox and myself have now formally opened at the Manor Ground this afternoon the Ian Baird fan club. He's been in tremendous form. He's now catching up Bernie Slavin. Ian Baird has scored 10 goals for the season. Yes, we're not forgetting Bernie Slavin scored one this afternoon. That makes Slavin on 12, Ian Baird on 10, and at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 5. Middlesbrough are surely on their way to their sixth away victory of the season. Penalties may well be debated by home fans. I know when they're given for the opposition 
But really here at the Manor Ground this afternoon, the fans can have no complaints because Ian Baird on 63 minutes was tumbled in the area. That was a penalty, and a few seconds or so ago, it was Bernie Slavin who was pushed in the back, and the referee, David Phillips, was man on the spot. The arm nonchalantly was raised towards the penalty spot, and Ian Baird did the rest. The watch tells me that there's now nine minutes of action left here at the Manor Ground. You can settle back, and you can carry on, and you can listen and enjoy this one to the full-time whistle because when you first joined us at the afternoon at the halfway stage, it was Oxford 2, Butter 2 in a marvellous, in a glorious second half. It's now moved to Oxford 2, medals for 5, and who knows if the results go the right way, medals for football club could move into the top three of the second division. And uh, I know we don't like to talk about promotion, nor do we like to talk about away victories, but medals are doing very well so far this season, and an interesting substitution, Alan Kernigan withdrawn from the action. Mark Proctor coming on. The only precaution in gives Mark Talk to another uh, eight minutes or so. That's all that is. Lincoln nil, Darlington three, Hartlepool two, Sc uh, Scarborough nil, Sunderland nil, Sheffield United one. So I beg your pardon, get that right. Sheffield United nil, <laughs> Sunderland one. Peter Davenport the scorer. Newcastle one, Watford nil. And just to reiterate that full time score, West three, Wasps. And just to reiterate something, Gordon, this afternoon is costing us a fortune. Thank you, my friend. It was all your fault, but well, well worth it. Yes, I wish it was a children need. It's every goal that Middlesbrough scored this afternoon. And you don't really expect your side to come on an away ground and drill five goals past the opposition goalkeeper. But that's exactly what the Middlesbrough players have done. And Paul Key, the Oxford custodian, is quite miserable at the moment. He's the only man in the whole half of the field. He's watching Borough defend at the moment at the other end. Middlesbrough attacking from right to left towards the Cuckoo Lane end of the ground. And uh, it's cuckoo time, really, for that Oxford goalkeeper as Middlesbrough policing it on the edge of the area with Tony Mowbray. Mowbray in turn to Jimmy Phillips. Phillips now to Mowbray once more. Keep ball on the edge of Butters' box. And a long clearance forward. Stu Ripley takes off after this one. Oh, he skips round the challenge there. The outstretched boot of Steve Foster. The pace of Ripley took him a little bit too far. Out of play it goes. We're to the left-hand side of the commentary position. Midway inside the Oxford half of the field. Oxford throw taken by... Les Robinson, Robinson finds number 10, that's Lee Nogan, Nogan moving forward, his shots are being tugged by Jimmy Phillips, but Nogan has the pace, was he in fact fouled, no says the referee, allowing Middlesbrough to continue, midway inside their own half with Mark Proctor to the other substitute, Stu Ripley, who gets a push in the back there from Les Robinson, but Ripley doesn't mind, he gives the ball back a distance of 25 yards towards his goalkeeper, Stephen Pears. Middlesbrough's away form this season has been remarkable. Winning, if this afternoon, well, that full-time score would be confirmed at Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 5, not no fewer than six occasions on opposition territory at Swindon, at Watford, at Brighton, at West Brom, at Portsmouth, and it would, of course, be the manor ground Oxford this afternoon, if only, I know there are ifs and buts in the world of football, but if only the home form was as good, Borough would be in second position in the second division table, but we're not too greedy. You carry on listening, carry on enjoying this one. Oxford 2, middles for 5, ball up to Bernie Slavin, but he's stopped there by Steve Foster, and Foster now has it inside centre circle. Foster, short pass there towards number 10, Lee Nogan. Nogan looking alongside him, those yellow shirts don't know really when they've had enough, they're going to continue to battle, as uh, Mickey Lewis finds it down right hand side, centre goes in now, chance possibly for number 11, Paul Simpson, but his pass when he should have really shot found Martin Foyle, far side of penalty area, Simpson's going to look for it once more and gets it, but a red shirt's coming out, trying to hem in the opportunities there, and in fact it goes to Mickey Lewis, shot on the turn from Mark Steen, summing up Oxford's afternoon, way, way, way over the top of the crossbar, and now Middlesbrough goalkeeper Stephen Pears is going to watch this one. In fact, uh, he's looking for a ball boy. There's usually one behind the goal. Not sure where they are. The Manor Ground, perhaps. They've gone home with that scoreline at Oxford 2, uh, Middlesbrough 5. And certainly a number of the fans in the main stand here have decided enough is enough. Guess which fans haven't? Yeah, you're right. Middlesbrough supporters behind Paul Key's goal are standing. It's a bit cold now at the Manor Ground. But they're not bothered. They're going to get their voices in fine tune for the full-time whistle which will come in about five minutes here and yell on their triumphs uh, long into the night and long I suppose back towards Teesside, ball inside centre circle, Stu Ripley, Ripley almost got in there, Ian Baird stopped, comes back to centre circle, Robbie Musto now to right hand side, Colin Cooper, Cooper up towards substitute Stu Ripley, oh a clever back heel and Bernie Slavin's in on the goalkeeper Paul Key but uh, Lyons with this near sided play, oh, I wish wouldn't stand behind that girder so much, I could have a clear view of it, has his flag raised for an offside decision against Bernie Slavin, but all the tricks and all the turns are coming now from the Borough players with that lovely little back heel from Stu Tripley that almost fed in Bernie Slavin. Oxford 2, Borough 5, a marvellous afternoon out for the Borough supporters here, and I would say there's about uh, 
at least 2,000 on the terraces at the Manor Ground, and they're going to carry on their support for Middlesbrough to full-time whistle, and I have no doubt whatsoever that they're going to carry that support to Wednesday night's game against Aston Villa at Villa Park, and Villa not in the best form this season in First Division, having a little bit of a, a hangover, really, from that uh, European... The UEFA Cup uh, dismissal by Inter Milan. It could well be that Borough can give them something to worry about as well. Enough of that, though. It's league action this afternoon. Enjoying this one. Oxford 2, Borough 5. Middles for attacking now. Robbie Musto towards far side. John Henry. Centre goes in. Ian Baird lays it off and selfishly to Stuart Ripley, but Ripley couldn't find the angle there. Pushed out towards right-hand side of the area. Centre goes in from Stuart Ripley. Drifts out over the top of Paul Key's crossbar. But that really was unselfish work from Ian Baird because Ian Baird might have thought of getting his fourth goal of the afternoon with the volley. Instead, he tried to bring in his colleague there, Stu Tripley, and the angle was just too much for Rippers. I was a little bit surprised at Ian Baird there. Perhaps he's had enough goal scoring for the afternoon. I sensed a volley coming up for that one there. He's right in front of goal. Led in Stuart Ripley, and I think Ripley was a bit surprised himself. Caught a little bit unawares by that one, Stuart. He's just, just uh, honing in on goal there. Maybe if he read down just a little bit sharply, more sharply than Stuart Ripley would have been in, then we would have been even more skinned. Yes, the ball is back with the Middlesbrough goalkeeper, Stephen Pears. Why are Boris so good away from home? <laughs> good question. They play a, a very, very relaxed style of football, I think. They hit people on the break, they soak up pressure, and then when they move forward, they look very, very sweet indeed. I can only take up a point which you mentioned a couple of minutes ago when you said that if Middlesbrough could do it at home, they'd be right at the top of the league. You can only echo those sentiments. Let's hope that Middlesbrough can do it. This is a superb performance this afternoon. Make no doubt about that. Oxford have had an awful lot of pressure, an awful lot of chances. Middlesbrough have converted the chances they've, uh, they've got this afternoon, they've had this afternoon, I should say. All right, people will point to say, yes, it was two penalties. They were in goal-scoring positions when the yeah, penalties were awarded as well. It is a good performance, but uh, we keep on saying about that man, Ian Baird. But really, he is the difference between the two sides this afternoon, not just the hat-trick, his overall performance. Our word is, uh, leave your checkbook alone, Joe Jordan. He's not for sale, is he? Absolutely not, at any <laughs> price. He's just added another zero onto the end of it. If you're thinking about coming down, Mr Jordan, I'd forget it. Come on, watch us by all means. Middlesbrough are a great entertaining footballing side, no doubt about that. But no way in the world is Ian Baird going to Tynecastle or anywhere else. No, we're tying down Ian Baird to Ayrson Park. That is his future, surely, with the club. But let's not forget in our prayers, really, of Ian Baird, that the rest of the side have contributed as well. Goal scorers this afternoon, hat-trick for Ian Baird. Bernie Slevin getting one on Robbie Musto against his former club, making that first-half revival from Oxford when they pulled it back to 2-2 seem like a distant nightmare as Oxford... Yellow shirt, tacking left to right, and now have the ball in the possession of number seven, Jim Magleton, being followed there by Lee Phillips. Options are limited, really, for Magleton. He can do nothing but try one or two tricks on the ball. In fact, he gets away from Jimmy Phillips, bringing Mark Steen inside the area. Shot from Steen goes over the top of the crossbar, and one or two die-hard Oxford supporters here in the main stand give good and generous applause there for Steen. He is at least, or at last rather, kept on trying for the Oxford side of Francis Steen this afternoon and he did launch that mini revival didn't he in the first half this goal on 29 minutes Lee Nogan 32 had us all worried batting our nails at 2-2 in the second half quite simply it has been for a power play Oxford 2 medals for 5 and the Oxford fans are happy with their sides performance in the second 45 minutes they've decided to keep the football and the referee looks towards the Oxford fans I think he's showing them the watch which is stopped at the moment and merely intimating to them that they're adding on their own agony because surely as we now move into injury time at the end of normal time three points are going into the middles for dressing room and Oxford assistant there comes out and kicks the ball towards referee David Phillips with 10 seconds into injury time referee checks that it's okay John Walk gives it to the ref ref back to John Walk once more and he scoops it towards Borough goalkeeper Stephen Pears the referee David Phillips has already checked his watch once in the last few moments or so, and now merely awaiting Stephen Pears to take this goal kick. Bit delayed, dying members of the game. Full time at Lincoln Central Bank, and Lincoln City nil, at Darlington three, and full time, I believe, at the Victoria Ground as well. Hartlepool two, Scarborough nil. So full time at Central Bank, Lincoln nil, Darlington three. Great away win for the Quakers, and a fine home win as well for the pool. Hartlepool two, Scarborough nil. And rather childishly, the Oxford supporters of Stephen Pears about to take that goal kick through on the other match ball. And now the referee makes sure that goes out of play before Stephen Pears can continue with this much delayed goal kick. It goes now into centre circle. Ball forward to Bernie Slavin. The middles for fans are greedy. They want the side sixth. Bernie Slavin has it. Shirt is pulled. Gives it to Stuart Ripley. Ripley skips round the challenge. 30 yards out from goal, directly in line with goal. Over towards the far side. Oxford's left as John Henry goes round. 
a scandalous tackle that went in there on John Henry that leaves him firmly on the floor and Middlesbrough have a free kick midway inside the Oxford half of the field Colin Cooper takes it now attempted turn by Bernie Slavin blocked though by Steve Foster Oxford chance to break oh have they? No they haven't full time score from the Manor ground is Oxford 2 Middlesbrough 5 great away victory from Middlesbrough their 6th away victory of the season for a goal scorers Ian Baird on 2 on 63 and also on 80 hat-trick for Ian Baird Bernie Slavin on 16 Robbie Musto 77 how my pen kept up with it I don't know in the first half, Oxford gave one or two causes for concern with goals from Mark Steen on 29 and Lee Nogan on 32 that at one moment made it Oxford 2, Borough 2 but the second half was Borough power play Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 5 and yes, he's getting the deserved applause from the Borough fans it's a hat-trick and a match ball for Ian Baird what a lovely way to spend the afternoon back to John in the studio Yes, uh, Middlesbrough go marching on away from home. Uh, great performance then. And uh, Oldham and Sheffield Wednesday above them, the latest we had. Both those sides were trailing. So hopefully Middlesbrough will uh, make up ground in that uh, promotion race. Yes, we can use uh, the word after a performance like that. Eight go goals away from home in the last uh, two matches. Those five this afternoon against Oxford. And good news elsewhere. That victory, as you've heard, for Darlington away to Lincoln City. We'll be going to Sinsel Bank shortly. But first to the Victoria ground. Good news continues. Hartlepool 2, Scarborough 0, Derek Williams. And this game finished in the most appalling conditions. The weather was bitterly cold and the sleet and rain was being blown into players' face. They did extremely well to finish the, the game uh, in one piece, as it were, because it really was an unpleasant afternoon for the players. But good news for the 2,000 or so Pools fans because they've gone away with the satisfaction of knowing that the side won 2-0 against Scarborough, a team that was up with Pools in the league but now has slipped a little further behind and Pools will have gained a lot of confidence from this. The Scarborough side set off with the greatest urgency. They bustled around all over the pitch. They had a player booked very early on in the game and uh, it looked as if they were going to give Hartlepool a torrid time but Hartlepool kept their heads and uh, in the ninth minute uh, there was a, a, a good bit of football when Baker put a header in from a corner and Matthews managed to scramble it off the line for Scarborough. Pools would have deserved to have gone ahead at that stage because they'd done well to get into such an attack.